Acts 11.21. Let's look at it. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. The Lord's hand was with them. What that's referring to in 11.21 is both God's presence and God's power accompanies those who embrace His vision. Let's just be clear here. Embracing and accomplishing God's vision is not a human endeavor. It is a spiritual endeavor. And when you think about vision, if you were to go see Dr. McMurray and get your eyes checked over at Wilson Eye Center, she would check your vision, and she would not be checking what you see. She'd be checking how you see. Embracing God's vision is not about what we see. It's about how we see. It's about God radically transforming whatever's going on in here so that we begin to see people and we begin to see the world the way God sees people and God sees the world. That's what embracing God's vision is. It's not about, you know, meditating enough and chanting enough so that you sort of change your mind. It's about literally being transformed by the renewing of your mind, according to Romans, and having your heart so changed that you don't even see people the way you used to see people. That you have been radically changed. And the great news, the good news from, from this text is, even though we are God's agent for that, God wants to and desires and actually, actually requires that He go with us and empower us on that journey. Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 139. I'm going to read from Psalm 139, uh, one of my favorite passages that sort of drive this point home. If there's one thing I've learned through Scripture, if there's one thing I've learned through my Christian walk, is that God does not make us take one single step without Him. There will be no fulfilling of God's vision unless God accompanies us on that journey. We may think we're rocking out there alone and he's not with us because we don't feel him. But it's not about feeling him. When you woke up this morning, you may not have felt like a Christian. But faith teaches us if we do the right thing, if we say the right things, if, we, if God has changed our hearts, we are Christians. Well, in the same manner, if we are struck out on this journey to accomplish his will, then absolutely, positively, 100% of the time, he accompanies us on that journey. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Here it is. Listen to this. Listen to this. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn and if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret, secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God. Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. 
Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I descend into hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Let me ask you something. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel knowing that you couldn't, if you wanted to, outrun God? How does it make you feel knowing that you couldn't get away from God if you tried? How does it make you feel knowing that if you embrace God's vision, it would be absolutely impossible for that vision to be realized and fully embraced unless he went with you? Because you can't get away from God. How does it make you feel knowing that his presence is with you forever, wherever you go? How does it make you feel knowing that if you were to go outside and get in your car and drive 268 miles to Titusville, Florida, and go to the Kennedy Space Center, that when you got there, God would be there? How does it make you feel knowing that if you were to get on the space shuttle out there and you were to take off and you were to go 238,457 miles to the moon, when you got there, God would be there waiting on you? How does it make you feel knowing that if you were to leave the moon and you were to travel 24 million miles all the way to the planet Venus, when you got there, God would be there? If you were to leave Venus and you were to travel another 26 million miles to Mars, when you got there, you would see there definitely is life on Mars because when you got there, God would be there waiting on you. If you were to leave Mars and you were to travel 93 million miles all the way to the sun, it would take you 17 years to get there if you traveled 1,000 miles per hour. And once you got there, if you were still alive when you got there and you could handle the heat when you got there, you would realize that 93 million miles and 17 years later, when you got to the sun, guess what? God would be there waiting on you. I'm telling you, there is not a mountain high enough, there is not a valley low enough, there is not a rock big enough that can separate you from God's presence. And when we come into God's house and we accept God's vision for this church and we leave those doors going out to that city to reach those people, we do not go alone. We go in God's presence. We go in God's power. And he said, I will absolutely, definitely be with you to the ends of the earth. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I descend into hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. So if he will take us to heaven, if he'll take us to the depths, if he'll be with us wherever we go, let me tell you something. If we embrace God's vision for Cross Point Church, then what happens with us is we go out those doors in his presence and his power to accomplish his vision. And that's the truth. Amen? Amen. Amen.